Hello everyone. I welcome all of you to Digital System Design class. Today we're going to give a little bit of a motivation and short information about digital systems that presumably a, a good start and introduction point to the course. What is a digital system? A digital system is any system which can be implemented to serve a particular function using digital logic elements. Digital circuits are everywhere. You can find the examples of digital circuits and communications, multimedia, consumer electronics, healthcare, defense software, and security. We are living in a digital age where people communicate using digital signals, share multimedia resources in digital format, our laptops, desktop computers, tablets, and PDAs. Whenever you go to a hospital or an army building, you will immediately realize that most of the electronic devices are based on digital logic. Now, software companies make you heavy use of digital circuitry, and the emphasis on personal security is unprecedented, and almost all solutions are implemented in digital format. What constitutes a digital system? A digital system has input interfaces, such as keyboards, antennas, microphones, or sensors. These are the tools we use to talk to a computer or a, a digital system in general. A digital system has output interfaces such as monitors, speakers, printers, and actuators. A digital system has arithmetic and logic units too, and those units process digital data. Digital circuits can be classified into two categories. One is called general purpose circuits, and the other is application specific circuits. A good example of general purpose circuits is computers. A general purpose computer is the one, given the appropriate application and required time, should be able to perform most of the common computing tasks. Personal computers, including desktops, notebooks, smartphones, and tablets, are all examples of general purpose computers. Application-specific computers serve a particular purpose. The term is used to differentiate general purpose computers from other types, in particular the specialized embedded circuits or computers used in intelligent systems. A nice example of that specific hardware is cell phones. So what are the basic building blocks of a digital system? The basic building blocks in a digital system are called digital logic gates that will help us implement more complex systems. There are three fundamental logic gates that we use, AND gate, OR gate, or NOT gate. Those gates are physical entities that require power supply and physical properties, such as gate delay. We will have to consider all of these physical properties when we do a design. The logic gates are used to implement something called Boolean algebra, which we will discuss later. But for now, you need to know that they are quite important and fundamental to digital logic design. There are two different categories when we consider dig digital logic blocks. One type is called combinational logic block. The other is called sequential logic block. A good example is a combinational logic block is OR gate and a sequential logic block flip-flops. We will discuss all the details of these elements later. One of the important distinctions between a combinational logic block and a sequential logic block is that unlike combinational logic, combinational logic which are the functions only of their inputs and are not based on the current state of the system, sequential circuits or sequential logic blocks have states, which means basically sequential circuits have memory. Logic blocks can have one or more inputs and one or more outputs. So what are the logic gates made of? They are made of something called transistors. The transistor is an electronic solid state device that can amplify an electric signal. Think of the you wanna listen Mozart. The input waveform is too small, but the transistor helps you amplify it so that you can hear. An amplification could be based on a voltage, power, or current. Usually, the output voltage is greater than the input voltage after amplification, or power output is greater than power input after amplification. You will learn more about them in your electronic classes, but let me give you brief information about them. Transistors. 
In a nutshell, a transistor is an electronic valve. The voltage current applied to the input gate controls how much current can flow between the output gates. Much like adjusting the handle on a water valve that varies the flow of the water. So what is digital about signal amplification anyway? Well, nothing. In fact, when you learn more about transistors, you will immediately realize that amplification is just a mode of operation. That means transistors have different modes of operations. A transistor can be used as a switch, as having modes on and off. For example, the gate voltage can be used to adjust the current that flows through the transistor. Think of this picture, where on the left side you see three nodes named G, D, and S. The voltage between G and S, called VGS, can be used to control the current flow between the nodes D and S. If the VGS greater than a threshold voltage V sub T, then the current flows and it implements the logic 1. If the VGS is less than the threshold voltage V sub T, then the, there is no current that's flowing between the nodes D and S that implements the logic 0. What is an integrated circuit? IC, so-called. A small electronic device made out of a semiconductor wafer using a planar fabrication technology. Integrated circuit is also known as chips. Another for, a, for another name for a chip, in fact. An integrated circuit is a small electronic device made of a semiconductor material. The first integrated circuit was developed in 1950s by Jack Kilby of Texas Instruments and Robin Noyes of Fairchild Semiconductor. So what type of complexity we are talking about? A one million? A couple of millions? Well, Intel Italian to build a processor, processor has four cores and over two mil billion transistors. Transistors are manufactured in nanoscale dimensions. If you think of manufacturing process bottom up, a circuit level design is a lower level than a logic design because gates are made of transistors as we have seen. A higher level design uses logic gates to assemble a special chip or integrated circuit that serves a particular mission. Chips can be used to create modules to be used in various applications. All the discussion about complexity and the number of transistors we have in CPUs and ICs today brings about an interesting question that how fast is the number of transistors per square inch on IC surface growing each year or every other year? The number of transistors per square inch on integrated circuits had doubled every year since its first inception. This observation made in 1965 by Gordon Moore, the co-founder of Intel, that the number of transistors per square inch on integrated circuits had doubled every year since the integrated circuit was invented. Moore predicted that this trend would continue for the foreseeable future. In subsequent years, the pace slowed down a bit, but data, but data density has doubled approximately every 18 hours. Most experts, including Moore himself, expect Moore's law to hold at least another two decades. So how do we really design such a complex system? There are three important milestones. One is to make abstractions, as we have seen transistors that are acting like switches. We keep that in mind. There are gates, combinational logic gates, the computational architectures like CPU, language programming abstractions on top of it, and software system abstraction on top of the language abstraction. This way, after making those abstractions, it just makes things much easier. Second milestone is the divide and conquer method. And the third milestone, do not reinvent the wheel. Reuse the previous designs and projects. So to make all the things easier, we need knowledge about digital logic. And this, this, is, this class is all about. We need tools to explore ideas, simulate, and validate various functionalities. We need platforms to field test, emulate, and design. In particular, open source software tools such as Peacewise and Logis hardware design with languages is the next step to this class, and they are VHDL or Verilog. You can download a, a free version of Peacewise from this website or Logism from that website. I want you to explore those websites to get a feel of what I'm talking about. 
So please direct any questions you want to that to my email address and I will be happy to see you for the next class. Thank you.